Hello everyone, I'm Kenshin, welcome to History Talk. Today's historical chat is about, the Teapot Dome Scandal. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and turn on the notification bell, thank you. At the end of March 2024, the chairman of the US House Oversight Committee, James Cummer, said he plans to invite President Biden to testify in the impeachment investigation initiated by Republicans. This is the first time the Oversight Committee has proposed summoning Biden, although he is unlikely to attend. The House Oversight Committee held a hearing on business transactions carried out by the Biden family, and Cummer, at the end of nearly eight hours of hearings, said, we need to hear the president himself. President Biden will be the focus of the investigation. Cummer also said, we hope to obtain bank records that is our goal, aiming to understand through investigation whether Biden was directly involved in Hunter Biden's business transactions, and whether concessions were made politically. The plan is to establish a committee to initiate investigation into sitting President Biden to clarify whether foreign funds have influenced American policy, focusing on Biden's involvement in his son Hunter Biden's business transactions, including wire transferring, money laundering and a series of investigations. Even the FBI's search into former President Trump included Hunter's former business partner Tony Bobulinski stating, once Republicans gain control of the House of Representatives, he will provide a series of evidences such as Hunter's emails and texts related to the transaction with Turkic communism. If true, this would be a big scandal. But this is not rare in the history of American presidents. Now, let's talk about another rarely mentioned scandal in the Chinese world, the Teapot Dome scandal, which involved an American president. First, let's turn the clock back to the early 20th century. At that time, the US Navy planned to transition its main fuel from coal to oil, so several oil-producing areas were designated by President Taft as the Naval Petroleum Reserves. In 1921, President Harding issued an executive order to transfer control over oil fields of Teapot Dome in Natrona County, Wyoming, Elk Hills and Buena Vista in Kern County, California, from the Navy to the Department of the Interior. However, it wasn't until the following year that Secretary of the Interior Albert B. Fall successfully convinced Secretary of the Navy Edwin C. Denby to transfer control, allowing the President's order to be implemented. Later that year, Fall leased the production rights of the Teapot Dome oil field to Harry F. Sinclair of Mammoth Oil, a subsidiary of Sinclair Oil. He also leased the Elk Hills Reserve to Edward L. Doheny of Pan American Petroleum and Transport Company. According to the 1920 Mineral Leasing Act, both leases were issued without bidding, which was legal. As the lease terms were very generous to the oil companies, it was no surprise that the companies secretly rewarded Fall handsomely. In November of 1921, he received an interest-free loan of $100,000 from Doheny, equivalent to $1.52 million in 2022. He also received other gifts from two manufacturers, totaling about $404,000, about $6.14 million today. Of course, this part of the money was illegal. Although Fall tried to keep his actions secret, his sudden improvement in lifestyle aroused suspicion, such as paying off 10 years of overdue ranch taxes. Carl McGee, the founder of the Albuquerque Journal, reported on Fall's sudden wealth, which of course attracted the attention and investigation of the Senate. The whole affair started in April 1922, when an oil operator in Wyoming wrote to Senator John B. Kendrick, expressing his outrage over Sinclair's acquisition of the land contract in a secret deal. Although Kendrick did not respond at the time, the letter effectively blew the whistle. Two days later, on April 15, Kendrick proposed a resolution calling for an investigation into the deal. The investigation was led by Republican Senator Robert M. La Follette of Wisconsin, chairman of the Senate Public Lands Committee. Initially, he believed that Fall was innocent. However, after his office in the Senate office building was ransacked, he began to believe in the validity of the investigation. Next up was Thomas J. Walsh, a Montana Democrat. Though he was the junior minority member, he spearheaded a two-year investigation. During this period, Fall, who was under investigation, continued to obfuscate his incriminating evidence. 
Since the leases were sufficiently legal, initially no evidence of wrongdoing was found. However, the problem was that many records mysteriously disappeared. Fall tried to make the leases look legal, but taking bribes was undoubtedly the heart of the crime. By 1924, the only outstanding question for Walsh was why Fall was able to become so wealthy, so quickly, and so easily. This question will be key in breaking the case. Fall used the bribe money for his ranch and business investments. As the investigation was coming to an end, it looked like Fall might get away. Unfortunately for him, Walsh uncovered one piece of evidence that Fall couldn't hide, the $100,000 loan Doheny had given to Fall. Thanks to this discovery, the bribery scandal unraveled. In 1929, Fall was convicted of accepting a bribe from Doheny and was sentenced to a year in prison. He was the first former cabinet officer in U.S. history to be imprisoned for misconduct while in office. But in 1930, after being acquitted, Doheny's company cancelled Fall's redemption rights to a house in New Mexico because the $100,000 interest-free loan was regarded as a bribe. As for Sinclair, he wasn't so lucky. He was fined and sentenced to six months for contempt of court. After his release from prison, Fall was financially struggling and lived with his wife in El Paso, Texas. After a long illness, he died on November 30, 1944. He was buried in the Evergreen Cemetery in El Paso. The main culprit of this commercial bribery was, of course, Fall, but President Harding, who ordered the oil fields to be transferred from the Navy to the Department of the Interior, inevitably became implicated as well. In June of 1923, Harding began a nationwide journey of his own. He dubbed it the Voyage of Understanding, but rumors of corruption had already started to circulate in Washington at the start of it. He was deeply distressed when he learned from the news about many illegal activities that members of his cabinet had hidden from him. On the evening of August 2, 1923, he suddenly suffered a heart attack while talking to his wife and died at the age of 57, making him one of only two U.S. presidents to have predeceased his father, the other being John F. Kennedy. After his death, evidence of Fall's guilt emerged, salvaging Harding's reputation. As a result of the case, the Teapot Dome oil field remained idle for 49 years and resumed production in 1976. From the cumulative 22 million barrels of oil extracted from the past, it generated over $569 million in revenue. In February 2015, the U.S. Department of Energy sold the oil field to the New York-based Stranded Oil Resources Corp. for $45 million. However, the company was acquired by Laredo Petroleum on January 5, 2021. The Teapot Dome scandal has historically been considered one of the most serious instances of cabinet corruption in the United States. It's often used as a benchmark for comparing subsequent American political scandals, especially when comparing it to the Watergate scandal, when the cabinet member and attorney general John N. Mitchell went to prison, marking the second time in U.S. history a cabinet member had been incarcerated. Even if the Senate is in the hands of the Republicans, no matter what improper evidence is found, it could be challenging to conduct further investigations unless Biden steps down, the current attorney general leaves. The possibility of a real investigation isn't high unless the American people protest, then there might be a slight chance.